Welcome to It's Your Turn. I'm Brenda Florida, Certified Life Coach, and no matter how exhausted, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed you are, there is hope. You can start exactly where you are. There's nothing wrong with you. In fact, you're ready for it to be your turn or you wouldn't be here. You know, we hear words like vitality and confidence and empowerment and transformation, but what do they really mean? What do they look like in the practical aspects of our life? In the It's Your Turn podcast, we explore, learn, and put into practice practical tools and wise concepts for transformation. This is real life change, not platitudes. It's the intersection of the practical and the aspirational. It's your turn to make decisions that are aligned with exactly what you want. And if you've lost connection to what you want, that's okay, we'll reconnect it. You'll learn how to shift out of self-sabotaging patterns and tap in to the clarity confidence and vitality that you may feel like has been lost forever. It's your turn to step into the driver's seat of your life and embrace the power that is within you. So let's get to it. It is Christmas day. If you're listening to this in real time, which probably you're not, but maybe it's the day after Christmas. And I'm wondering if you are ready to let some things go. It's so funny because I love the holidays from the minute Thanksgiving starts until New Year's Day. I am just all about it. Uh, but the day after Christmas, I'm done with Christmas. So I like to have my whole week between Christmas and New Year's as sort of a reset. And I get down all my Christmas decorations. I clean the house. I, you know, it's kind of like a purging and cleansing spring cleaning thing for me. And I know it started because one year we had to actually move on the 26th of December. And this was when my kids were really young. So I think my youngest was two, his birthday's in December. Maybe he had just turned three, but I think he had just turned two. So that means my oldest was like either nine or 10. So I have four kids in seven years. And so here I have all these little kids. And uh, we're moving the next day. So I had to, once they went to bed on Christmas night, I needed to get the tree down and stuff to be ready for the movers. And I, and then, you know, of course we moved. So fresh start. And I liked that so much. I've never taken my tree down on Christmas day again, but I always have it down on the 26th. And I love it. I love cleansing, you know, my life of all the extra, you know, clutter and decorate or for me, you know, decorations that are, and clutter and stuff that kind of happen at Christmas. I love all my Christmas decorations, but it's just more stuff in the house. And also internally in my own life, I just, you know, the year is ending. I happen to have a birthday in January and I don't know if that's part of it for me. I know some people are not into the whole, you know, new years and resolutions and all that. I'm not always into resolutions, but I love the idea of ending a cycle and starting a new one. And that's what the new year is for me. And so for me, uh, being a Christmas, you know, a person who celebrates Christmas, but uh, you know, whether you celebrate Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever you celebrate uh, or don't. The calendar tells us it's the end of a cycle. It's the end of a year and the beginning of a new one. And a wise person who I don't know who they are, I wish I did, you know, it sounds like something roomy or somebody like that would say, um, said that on the journey to enlightenment, there's nothing we need to get, only things we need to let go of. And the first time I heard that, which was a few years ago, that resonated with me so deeply. You know, we always feel like we need more, more. I need to have, you know, more insight or more wisdom or more this, more that, you know, when in fact, we actually already have everything we need, but we do need to let go of many things, lots of limited thinking, lots of patterns that don't serve us all the people pleasing, all the fear of setting boundaries, the fear of 
you know, taking a risk and doing what you really want to do with your career, or your business, or the fear of upsetting somebody. So you silence yourself, the fear of leaving relationships that don't serve you, whether those are your romantic, that's your romantic relationship or some other relationship. Um, or the fear of getting into one, right? Maybe it's time for you to start dating and get back in the romance game. That's what I'm ready for. So what do you need to let go of? I would love to hear your answer to that. So either put it in the comments wherever you're listening to this podcast, or if it's easier, because I don't know, to me it always is, but uh, go to Instagram. I'm Brenda Florida Coach. If you don't already follow me, follow me and drop me a DM and tell me you listened to this podcast episode and, you know, tell me what you want to let go of because it's really important to let go of the things that are no longer serving us. We can end up hiding our brilliance. And I don't mean intelligence, although, you know, it's that too. But your brilliance is everything that makes you uniquely you. And you're the only you there is. You're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that ever will be. Now, I know we all intellectually know this, but we tend to lose the awe that we deserve for ourselves and every other human being. Because we are all unique. We're all, you know, every snowflake and every snowflake is pretty. Every snowflake has its brilliance, you know, but then sometimes those snowflakes fall and get mud on them or somebody pees on them. And I think that's kind of what happens to us is that our brilliance gets peed on. Wow. I didn't see that coming. You can tell these are unscripted podcasts, um, but it's a pretty decent metaphor. And we get peed on through our culture through oftentimes religion, oftentimes through our family, even sometimes our friends, but they're through traumas that happen to us, all kinds of things, a bad boss, a nasty coworker, whatever, they rain on our parade, right? And we start to believe. And when we're children, this is so important because some of the reasons those things you believe about yourself that actually are not true they feel so true because you've been told it over and over and over in your life. I totally believed I was not smart until I was in my mid thirties. And I am very smart. I mean, I don't know what my IQ is, who cares, but I'm a very smart woman, but I actually believed I was not. Now, nobody told me, I, I don't, I mean, I don't have a memory of somebody telling me I'm stupid. I just know by the time I was in high school, I felt like I wasn't smart. I didn't take my SATs because I was afraid my score would be so bad it would be embarrassing. So you don't need to know why or you don't need to have the memory of, oh, it's because this teacher said I was dumb or I got, you know, put in the corner for this or my parents told me, I was, you know, some of us have those stories and memories and, you know, that's painful and we have to deal with those but even if you don't have the memory that attaches to it and you're kind of like I don't know why this is even the case but I think I'm terrible at this or not good enough or you know something's wrong with me or whatever that all you need to know is that you feel that because that is absolutely not true there's nothing wrong with you we are all imperfect human beings living imperfect human lives and you have your own unique brilliance and the world needs, desperately needs your brilliance. So that's what I do, whether it's in a broad sort of sweeping way, like a podcast format is, or when I'm on Instagram and posting things, you know, posts or reels or doing lives over there. But even more deeply when I'm in one-on-one -on -one coaching. When I'm in one-on-one -on -one coaching with you, I am able to tune into those limitations that you may think of as uh, ordinary or true about yourself, just like assumptive, you know? And But when I see you, I don't see you that way. I see your brilliance. It's part of the beauty of working with a coach like me or I'll just say me, because I, you know, every coach works a little differently. So I'll just speak for myself because that's the one I know. 
Um, I don't have an agenda for you. You People don't come to coaching. Uh, they sometimes have an agenda, but I don't think like, oh, in five sessions or 10 sessions or whatever, I've got to get this person ready to start a new job or get divorced or whatever the thing is or start dating or whatever. No, because I'm not going to buy into an agenda. What I'm doing is helping you get to your brilliance and your brilliance. When you let go of all that bullshit that holds you back and limits you, your brilliance will know exactly what to do. And that's what I help people do is get to that brilliance. And then sometimes, you know, build the practical plans. I do like to say that my style of coaching is like the intersection of aspiration and practicality because I love big visions, big ideas, you know, big lofty concepts of enlightenment and things like that, wisdom and blah, 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 you know, empowerment, all these words. But then I also want to say, okay, so now how do we do that? What does empowerment look like in my life? Well, for most people, what empowerment looks like is they speak up for themselves when they need to. They set the boundaries they need to. They leave the relationships they need to. They leave the jobs they need to. They change the businesses they own if they need to, you know, whatever it is, because they are following their own inner guide to their best life. And all of us have blocks to that. We all have limited limited thinking. I do too. I go to a coach to get help with my stuff. I take programs to get, you know, help get facilitators to help me make my journey easier because we all have blind spots. And if we don't get a coach or therapist or somebody to help us get through those blind spots and begin to unravel and let go of the things that no longer serve us, then growing is very slow and very hard on our own. So one, I want you to know, like, there's no need for you to do it by yourself. There's no particular, you know, glamour in doing it alone. It's like so many things in life where if we get a guide who's been there and has done it and does it, uh, I'm very much a practice what I preach kind of a coach. So if you had a window into my life or was a fly on the wall, you would see me doing the same things I tell you to do. Having my um, morning practice, having my spiritual practices, my mindset practices, my relationships, you know, with people, whether it's a new boundary I need to set, set with a family member or something I realize I need to apologize to one of my kids for, or, you know, like whatever, or speak up for about myself with in business or with a client or whatever it is. Like, it's not always easy for me either, but I do it because I'm not going to ask clients to do something I'm not willing to do. It just doesn't work for me. So I wanted to give you today, um, uh, Two, th two things, plus I'm going to end today with a little guided meditation. One, as a bonus, if you're listening to this in real time, between, the between now, which I'm recording this on December 19th, so from, but I'm not releasing it till Christmas Day. So anyway, from Christmas Day till January 2nd, I'm running a half price coaching special. Now I only do this once or twice a year. I kind of do it myself as a way to just give back because with one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's a time thing, right? There's no economy of scale. When I charge less, I just make less. <laughs> and so um, for me, it's a way to give back to current clients, to returning clients, to new clients, um, just to make that entry or continuation point um, a little easier on the pocketbook. So I've got my three session package is half price until January 2nd. So you'll see a link for that in the show notes. If you are not listening to this in that time frame, and that special is over, please still reach out to me because if there's a real financial need, I sometimes have scholarships I can offer people um, and, you know, we'll find a way to work something out. Or um, I promise you, there's no one I've ever coached who paid full price who said it wasn't worth it. So transformation, when your life changes, you don't think about how much money you spent. I mean, I've, I can't even, I mean, I'm sure hundreds of thousands, I mean, you know, 
over 30 years, I've spent so much money on my own growth and unfolding. And I don't ever regret one penny, even when I've charged the stuff and had no way to pay for it, whatever, because who you become is so amazing. It, the money is a very secondary thing. Um, so anyway, there's links in the here where you'll find this or as always, uh, whatever podcast platform you're listening to, there's links in the show notes for to reach me in all sorts of ways. And maybe it's just easier to remember I'm Brenda Florida Coach on Instagram. And you can always DM me there, Brenda Florida Coach on Instagram. That link is also in the show notes. But I wanted to give, so, so on the owning your brilliance side, I want to just to like sort of let that sink in that like that's a tool in and of itself. It may sound really simple, but we spend so much time criticizing ourselves and putting ourselves down. If you were to spend five minutes a day, just sort of like talking to yourself or imagining or sort of being in a meditation, which I'm going to give you here in a minute, um, then and and telling yourself you have everything you need. You are a bright light in the world. It's time for you. It's your turn to own your brilliance and just sort of feel the joy and the freedom and the possibility of that. And just let yourself daydream in that for two minutes a day, five minutes a day. I mean, that would be plenty. And it would start to change how you think and feel about yourself. If you want to put that on steroids, then do it in the mirror. Stand and look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. You are brilliant. You are a bright light in the world. You are smart. You are capable. You can do great things. Like just give yourself affirmations. You always want to do it in the, you know, like if you're looking in the mirror, you might be doing it third person. Like I was, you are. Use your name, Brenda, you're this, you know, Brenda, you're that or Brenda is that, or use the I am. I am is a super powerful two words. I am brilliant. I am owning my brilliance. I am lovable. I am love. I am grateful. I am abundant in all ways. I am successful. You know, all those I am statements, you don't want to do the, I'm hoping I will. And I wish I was like, we don't want to use that language. We want to use very affirmative. I am type of bold, short, simple statements. Like you just notice every example I just gave there three or four words. If it's more than three or four words, uh, you don't, that's too complicated for like the brain to rewire those pathways. Just keep it super simple. Three words is usually perfect. I am brilliant. I am abundant. I am successful. I am lovable. I am desirable. Uh, you know, there's so many of us that are that feel undesirable, especially if you're getting towards middle age, whatever that is, and beyond, you know, somewhere 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, 80s, where especially as women, but I don't know, I, you know, I say that, and even as I say that, I'm about to correct myself, because I'm not sure it's different for men. I think it just gets acted out a little bit differently. But there are so certainly our culture has not been kind in the last 100 years to women who age. And so there can be, I have a number of clients right now working through, you know, relationship challenges or divorces or starting to date and really struggling with, are they sexually desirable? So go to that mirror and look at yourself and put a grin on yourself, on your face and say, I am desirable. I am sexually desirable. If that makes you feel better, you know, whatever it is, whatever you're wanting to claim. And we're going to talk next week in next week's episode, because that will be New Year's Day about some of those things we desire and what we really want to, you know, what sort of bright lights we want to shine for ourselves and on ourselves in the new year. But for today, just work on those I am statements and spend a few minutes each day with them. And then on the letting go piece, I want to say that one of the reasons I have a lot of clients who come to me and they're really critical of themselves because they haven't been able to let go of something. It's like, I know that doesn't really serve me anymore and I can't let it go. Why is that? Why is it so hard to let go? Well, here's my short answer. We can't let go of something usually until we've actually healed it, processed it, some kind of word like that, whatever resonates with you, dealt with it, whatever. We usually can't 
um, just like by some sort of sheer will let go of it. Okay. So when I have clients who have something they can't let go of, it's usually because there's, there's still a lot of pain around it, usually from their childhood or much younger in their life. And their kind of adult, logical, pragmatic mind is like, okay, well just get over it kid. Right. But what little kid whose mom says, get over it or stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. That was one of my mother's favorites. Did it really help, right? It doesn't. Our little kids inside of us, they need compassion. They need to be heard. They need to be comforted. They need to talk about what happened to them. You know, there's a whole thing there. So I also do a lot of sort of inner child healing work when I work with people one-on-one -on -one because that's usually the key to letting something go. Usually when we can't let something go that we know we want to let go of, it's because there's healing that still needs to be done. So again, hop on over to my bio um, if you're listening to this in real time and check out the link for that half price coaching package. If you're not listening to this before January 2nd, then um, DM me if you're, or email me, all of it's in the show notes, um, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, because that is really the power of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, so I want to leave you today with a little guided meditation and don't freak out. Um, this is, I'm only going to go maybe two or three minutes and I'm going to, I'm doing it right here at the end so that in the future, if you want to come back to this, you can just kind of fast forward here to these last couple minutes. And of course, good grief, if you're driving or something like that, please do not close your eyes. Um, you know, you can listen to it with your eyes open and it can still be effective, but just pay attention to whatever you're doing because we want you to be safe and then find a time that you can um, close your eyes and really be just with yourself and let these words really sink in deep and um, use it, use it as a tool. It's such a powerful tool. A lot of people say they can't meditate. There's a lot of ideas around meditation. And let me just say that uh, one of the best descriptions I've heard of it is that meditation is simply to have a singular focus for a certain period of time. So some people, like I think it's the Buddhists maybe that do the flower, you know, or the lotus meditation where they just stare at a lotus flower for ever so long. You know, some of these folks are doing it for hours and hours, and but it doesn't matter. You don't have to do it for hours and hours. You can do it for a couple of minutes. And I think a guided meditation, like what I'm going to take you on here for a couple of minutes, is the easiest entry point to meditation because I'm going to be talking to you. So it allows your mind to just tune into my words, which allows you to sort of let go of the other thoughts that might be traipsing through your head. And if other thoughts traipse through, that's okay. Don't criticize yourself, but it's much easier with practice to get to where you can listen to someone talking you through something and set your own thoughts aside than to try to do it in silence or something. Very, very, very hard. Um, I mean, of course it can be done. I learned how to do it and I have the biggest monkey mind with thoughts, obsessive thoughts coming through all the time. So everybody can do it. But not everybody, you know, has the desire to do what they need to do to, to, you know, get there. So that's okay. Just start where you are. Start exactly where you are being exactly who you are, because that is the only place to be. So here we go. If you're in a safe place um, and can do it, you can close your eyes and just listen to my voice and let the words soak into your heart. So I want you to imagine yourself in like the fit, your favorite room of your house. And I want you just to be super comfy, whether you're in your bed and your PJs or under a cozy blanket on your couch, or you can be in the bathtub. I don't care. Whatever feels really cozy and warm and nurturing and delightful to you. And from there, I want you to imagine that you are a magical being. And so you can transport yourself effortlessly from this favorite spot of your house to another favorite spot of yours that is out in nature. I want you to pick something out in nature. So maybe you'll be at the beach or maybe you'll be in the mountains or on a hiking trail or 
laying under some palm trees in a hammock or wherever it is, it doesn't matter. You, you know, you pick your most favorite place in nature. It can be an imaginary place. You don't have to have ever been there. It could be a stream and you're listening to the water flow over the rocks and the sun is shining, or maybe you love a good thunderstorm and you're just, you know, in a sheltered place, listening to the rain and the thunder and lightning, whatever it is, just put yourself there and be all there. Just use your imagination, make it up. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But I want you to take that really cozy, comfy, relaxed body of yours, and I want you to take it to your favorite place. And now I want you to imagine that there is a person, or maybe it's an animal, coming towards you, and you can tell they're friendly. You can just, you know, see the love all over them. And it's coming towards you and it can be whatever you want it to be. You know, it might be a dog or a cat or it could be a leopard or an elephant or a giraffe or any, any, animal. it could be a butterfly flying over. It can be any animal or a person. It might be a being, a goddess, a, you know, effervescent sort of angel type being, or um, it could be somebody very, you know, human in form. It doesn't matter. It's just somebody that is coming towards you and you can tell they have a gift for you. And you're so excited because you're excited to see them. You can tell there's nothing but beauty and love shining off of them. And you can tell they have a gift for you and you can't wait to see what it is. And so I want you to reach out your hands, like, you know, put your hands together, palms open and receive that gift. And then I just want you to close your hands around it. And then I want you to take that magical body, wish your person, your animal, your being, your spirit guide, a farewell and then travel back to your own home, back to that cozy spot you were. And no matter how big or small that gift was, it doesn't matter because you're magical. And so you just bring it back with you. And now you're back in that cozy, beautiful spot in your own home, your favorite spot. And I want you to go ahead and open up your hands and see what that gift is, because that gift is there for you, for you to help know your brilliance and maybe also have an insight into something you need to let go of or it could be one or the other there's no wrong way to do this and if you're struggling with the imagination of it all don't worry about that just let the story play out in your mind's eye like you were watching a movie and if it doesn't feel personal to you that's okay there's nothing you can do that's wrong here you are just intuitively receiving a gift and that gift is for you and about you and now I want you to look at it and whatever it is just receive it in love and you may understand it it could be you know like a heart or a book or I've received all kinds of gifts when I do this with myself sometimes it's words sometimes it's a statement or a phrase or something like that um and sometimes it's all very loosey-goosey and I can't quite figure it out, but it just feels like love. I just, from doing this, from putting myself in this meditative sort of receptive imagination state, imagining state, I ju it just allows me to receive the energy of love that is all around me all the time. And so now you can open your eyes and come out of the meditation and just allow yourself to have whatever experience you had and to know that you could listen to this again, you know, tomorrow and have a totally different experience. You're being, you're learning to be open and receptive to what's inside of you. The reason why I like this technique is because all that is, is taking you to what's in you. It's taking you away from the idea that somebody outside of you has the answers. I do not have your answers. What I do have are tools that can help you find your own answers. 
So if that was intriguing to you at all, or you got something out of it, or you didn't get anything out of it, whatever it is, I would love to hear it. So again, drop me an email, the links in the show notes, or hop over to Instagram, Brenda Florida Coach, and DM me, because I always love hearing from you, and you don't have to perform for me. So if that did nothing for you, that's okay, you can say so, you know, and if you got something out of it, and you want to share that with me, so that there's just a sort of a witness to that experience for you, I would be honored to do that. So with that, I'm going to sign off for today and I will see you next week in our next episode of It's Your Turn. Thank you for joining me for this episode of It's Your Turn. I've got resources and links in the show notes for you, but here's what's more fun. DM me on Instagram at Brenda Florida Coach and let me know you listened to today's episode. I'd love to connect with you. And then share this episode with somebody who needs to hear it because I know you know somebody who needs to hear it. And I'll see you in the next episode of It's Your Turn.